All right, welcome back to another Harmonious at Lunch. I am super excited for today's episode. We got a guest who has a unique story, a really interesting story, and a, a cool path that's very much in alignment with what we teach and talk about here at What If with the Harmonious Architecture. We're talking about business systems and a unique approach to it, but also really the, the path of today's story is the payoff of focusing on and having, developing, building a business system. So on this podcast, we're here to disrupt the way you think about your business, help you scale and grow. And I do want to mention real quick, if you're interested in figuring out where your business is stuck, why it's stuck, and get yourself to that next level, I'll put this on the screen. You can always go take our bad assessment, the business architecture diagnostic, figure out which of these 10 areas that you need the most help in. And I think you're going to hear a lot of different things today that tie back into the bad and definitely into the harmonious architecture. So uh, let's dive in. Let's welcome our guest, Mikey. Mikey, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it. Yeah. So let's go back to the beginning. We were talking before we started recording and you have a fascinating story that I said was unfortunately unique. And that is one of success in small business. So take me back to the beginning when you were starting your your first business. What did What did life look like? What was that business at the time? Well, uh, my first business uh, wasn't really on the legal side, so I'm not going to go that back that, that, <laughs> okay. that, far. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to go back that far. But uh, so I started out as a rapper. Funny enough, that's where I got most of my business skills from because I wanted to push my music. Uh, that's where the Mikey Bars name came from, and it just kind of stuck. Um, you could actually go on YouTube and see my old music. I don't know if I'd recommend it, but uh, it, it's still there. It's still up there, floating around. And uh, I realized that nobody wanted to, to hear my music. Nobody wanted to buy my music. I was probably going to be broke forever if this was the path that I followed. So I went and I got a order of T-shirts because we wanted to sell T-shirts. I ordered 100 T-shirts. They were like $10 a piece, cost me 800 bucks. I watched the guy print them. He had a heat press and a plotter. It took him 15 minutes and he was uh, printing out a shirt. So I was curious. I looked up how much this stuff cost and I found out that I could actually purchase all of the equipment for less than my the cost of my initial uh, run of t-shirts. So I went up to Toronto, um, I'm in Canada, Ontario, Canada here. And I went up to Toronto and I bought a heat press and a plotter and I started making our own branded shirts. Um, again, failure, nobody wanted our shirts because we're in like this small little hick town and we're like rappers and people are like, oh yeah, whatever, local rappers. Um, but funny enough, people did want custom shirts. So people would come to me and be like, oh, you can make custom shirts. So I'd make shirts for Stag and Doze and whatever else people wanted. I actually almost got sued by Monster and my Facebook almost got taken down because I printed out a Monster shirt. So if you're printing custom shirts, make sure you have licenses if you're doing stuff like that. <laughs> little little tip. Um, but yeah, and then one of my buddies actually approached me one day and said that he had a liquidation store and he was looking to rent out the corner of it. And he said he wanted $200 a month and 5% of sales. Um, I was a security guard at the time. I was going to school for police foundations and I actually dropped out of school and I quit my job, which I don't recommend, um, but I did. And I went and I started up this little clothing shop called Ill Apparel in the corner of his liquidation store, uh, me and my buddy. And, you know, I sometimes, some months I made money, some months I didn't. Uh, the, my buddy there would come into the store throwing toaster ovens through the ceiling and doing all kinds of crazy shit. So I was like, you know what, I, I got to get out of here and I got to go get my own location and I got to try to find a different product to sell. At the time, it was 2015 and vaping was just getting started um, at the time. So I noticed there was only one vape shop in town. So I made an order for, uh, for some vapes. I actually had to smuggle some nicotine across the border um, because I actually couldn't get nicotine in, in Canada. So it's uh, this is a rated R story. This is the rated R version. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, I ended up starting, I transitioned from ill apparel to ill HQ vapor and apparel because I still wanted to keep doing the apparel, but I wanted to try this vape stuff. And uh, I went and got my own location, started selling the vape stuff. And in my first year of business, I did about $47,000 in sales. Half of that went back into uh, cost of product and everything. And I was working seven days a week at this point. Um, I, I tried on uh, this little small, like uh, a small street in town and the highest that we ever got to was maybe $6,000 a month. And we had no parking, no visibility, no nothing. And I was just like, you know what, this isn't why I started a business. I got to do something different here. So I started looking for a different location. I found one on the main street in our town and uh, I, I contacted the landlord and he told me that the rent there was like three times what we were paying at this place. We were paying 600 bucks a month. The rent over here was like 2,500 bucks a month. 
Um, and so I asked him, Hey, you know what? I'm a brand new entrepreneur. I just want to get started here. Could I actually, um, get three months free and then I'll pay you your, your first and last month's rent in three months. And sure enough, he said, he said, no problem. Thankfully, because I only had $8,000 in my bank account. So I only had enough money to pay first and last. And then if we didn't make enough money as I thought we were in that first month, I was out of business. So it was literally a make it or break it move. And I was working at, uh, in this business for two years at this point. So I had to make this work and it was the scariest decision of my life, but Hey, entrepreneurism, it's all about risk, right? So, um, I went and I, I went to that location. And like I said, at the previous location, our highest month was around $6,000 at this new location. Our first month we hit 14 K next month, about 22, 26, 32. And it just kept going up, uh, and up and up from that point. And, uh, and here we are now, uh, we hit the seven figure rate. We're doing about 1.5 million a year. Uh, last year we did an acquisition, so we acquired one of our competitors and, uh, we plan on having 10 locations in the next, uh, 10 years or so. And we have a, a full staff. I've got five, five staff members. Both locations are fully staffed and, uh, operating while we, while we speak. That's awesome. And I think that's, there, there's two obviously key moments among a thousand others, I'm sure. But in that story, there, there's two things. It was the initial leap that you took and it was just, you know, we, we have to make this work. I have to make this work, which is, is great. That's entrepreneurship at its core is, is taking that leap and getting to the, whatever the future you want to make. The second one. And I think the more important one is anybody can start a business. Not a lot of people can sustain and grow a business. You're, I'm sure you're aware of the stats. 50% of businesses go out in business in the first year, 80 and five, 96 in 10. Yep. So the key, what I believe, and from talking to you before the show, what you believe is it's the systems, the operating model, and the framework to run your business. You don't get from solopreneur making $22,000 a year to scaling to 10 locations without a system. So tell me about that Absolutely. process. What was it like for you to, to build these systems, the trial and error? I know you went through a couple different frameworks, but let's talk a little bit about the importance and how you're building those systems out. Yeah. Well, you know what? It all started with the book, The E-Myth. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with that book, uh, but that book just, it, it blew my mind. Um, just talking about McDonald's and how the McDonald's story got started. And that's when I went out and I watched the McDonald's movie. Um, and it started like, it just started leading me down this path of systemization. And the more I got into systems, the more I just started nerding out about this stuff. And unfortunately, The E-Myth was great um, teaching me about uh, why systems were important but there wasn't really anything in there about how to create systems. So that led me down another path. And I ended up finding um, uh, a guy named David Jennings, I was telling you about earlier. And uh, David is the founder of System Hub and System Hub has a framework called uh, Systemology. And that was basically the, my first experience with systems. And uh, in the book, they teach you basically how to document your systems. And, uh, and so, so basically the, the way that we do it, I can give you just a quick little step-by-step -step on, on how we do it. So the, the owner and the entrepreneur should never be the person that's documenting the system unless they're the person responsible for doing the system. So whoever does the system in my business is the one that's responsible for doing it. So if we have a new task or a new system that needs to be created, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the person that does the system that's responsible for it, record themselves doing it and talk me through the steps in the recording. So if it's a physical thing, we get them to pull out an iPhone. If it's something on the computer, we get them to do it on Loom. But basically, we just get them to talk through what they do step by step by step. Now, we don't get caught up in perfectionism at this point. Even if the way that we do it, it we know that it's not a great way and it's super manual. It doesn't matter. We're just documenting at this point. We're not optimizing. Uh, once we have that video, I bring it onto the computer and then I pull it into Loom to get a transcription. We take that transcription and we pull it into ChatGPT where we have a prompt, where we prompt ChatGPT to become a documenter. And then we pull the transcription in when we say, hey, ChatGPT, here's a transcription of a uh, system that we have. Can you turn it into a step-by-step -step system? We have this full prompt out for it. Then it will spit out the first iteration of our system. We go and put that into System Hub, we document it. And then the next person, then we get uh, go and get somebody who's never done that before to uh, basically stress test it. And if they have any questions, they put it in the comment section. We uh, optimize it and we go from there. And then basically um, in every weekly meeting, we have something called an issues list. And if one of our systems is out of date, we expect all of our staff to use our systems every time they go through the, uh, the, the task. And if something becomes out of date, we add it to our issues list. 
we have a systems champion in our company. And so the systems champion would then go in and update the system and we would continue going from there. Um, and that, that's basically, uh, that's basically how it, it's super, super simple. That's how we do it in, in our company. And that's how you're able to, to delegate and basically duplicate yourself in your business. This is, I'm, I'm laughing over here. So you didn't share all of that with me beforehand. No. And I didn't share this with you, but this is actually ironic and, and should really be the lesson of this show. So I started a custom apparel business as well. That was my first business yeah. in 2018. <laughs> so a little bit after you. Um, and that is exactly how I scaled my business. I used that exact process. Almost, It was before ChatGPT. So we actually developed the steps. Um, yeah. but it was same thing screen recordings we had a, a, a playbook we called them playbooks playbook log they were screen recordings iphone videos uh into the the google docs videos it was cloud-based we had to review them make sure they were up to date um and i was able to sell that business just earlier this past year because of the systems most people are not buying businesses in that industry you know that i think absolutely and i was able to sell it quickly at a higher multiple than i probably should have received because it was all documented and I was out of it. And yeah, that's, that is so cool that, that you did the same thing, regardless of the system or the, the operating system that you're using, like, please note that down. If you don't have documentation, if you don't have systems, if you're not operating within a structure, your business is chaos, your life is chaos and you'll never get out of it. Absolutely. So, and I, I think there always has to be an exit strategy. You know, I, I, I teach this stuff and I coach friends. Like I, I don't really have like anything structured or anything uh, out there, but if my friends come to me and they want coaching, I'll give them coaching. And a lot of people, strangely enough, I don't know if they just don't believe in themselves or if it's just uh, my goals are different than theirs. But when I tell people that they have to make sure that their business is sellable, um, they lose their mind. They're like, well, what if I don't ever want to sell my business? I'm like, that's okay. The, the point is, is that you need to have options in your business, whether you sell it or not, you need to be able to sell it or have an exit strategy at some point, or else all that work that you put in was worthless. And you might as well go get a job because if you're building an asset, you might as well build it to be sellable. That's the point of having a business. The point of having a business is to create an asset just because it's sellable. Like I was saying, doesn't mean you have to sell it. You can own it passively. Um, you could, you could, uh, take a vacation if you want to at some point, but if you can't walk away from your business for like three months and not only have it still operating when you come back, but still have it growing, you still have work to do in my opinion. And I think it's a, a very, very important thing to focus on. Yeah. And, and this is something that I think a lot of people don't get because they, they buy themselves or they start themselves a job yeah. and what, like, what's the point? It's a job that probably pays less, gives you less vacation days, more headaches, please put put systems in place have a process before the systems though i think there's a first step and it sounds like you think there's a first step too why are we creating these systems and how do we know what to create systems around so where do you start in that process well i don't know exactly how the phrase goes but there's a part in uh, alice in wonderland and a lot of people come to me and they ask me like well what's my next step well how do i do this well how do i go there and I always come back at them with, with the Alice in Wonderland scenario where she's in the forest and uh, she meets up with the, the Cheshire cat and she says, well, where's my next step or where's my ne next direction or where do I need to go? And then he asks her, well, where are you going? Where, like, where do you want to go? And she says, well, I don't much care where I go. Then he says, well, it doesn't matter then where, where you end up. Right. And, and I feel like that's so powerful because if, if you don't know where you're going, if you don't have a vision and an idea of where you're going, then where you are now is good enough. Like you've already made it right? If you don't have an idea of where you want to be, then you're already there. Um, so I believe, you know, you, you have to have a vision. You have to know why you started the business. Why do you exist? Where do you want to be in 10 years? Um, and you have to have, it has to be uh, completely, completely concrete. The vision is very important. The foundation of any business is basically your vision and your core values. Your vision determines where you're going to go. Your core values determines who you're going to go there with. And that's the most important thing in uh, in a business, I think, is the foundation because you can't create systems if you don't know where you want to go. Um, you can't have weekly meetings. Your data doesn't matter. Like no, none of these other core competencies of a business matter unless you know uh, where you're going and why you're going there. I, I actually feel the why is more important than the where or the what. Um, but the vision as a whole is is so so critical. Yeah, we're definitely speaking the same language here, and I just want to. If you're listening to this, I want to make sure you understand the the importance and the long-term effects of this. If you don't have the vision, if you don't have core values, 
if you're not chasing a mission as a company, you're just going to have people who are producing widgets. They're, they're cogs in a wheel. They don't care. You'll hire anybody. You'll have no reason to fire them. And you'll, the, there will be no alignment and no compelling future for anybody to chase. Your, your company will die. That's the, that's the short, short story there. Um, so I want to tie this together real quick, and then we'll come back with one last question for Mikey. This has been an awesome episode. It totally resonates with everything we teach at What If and the Harmonious Architecture. And we touched on a number of the disciplines. We just came out of navigation, mission, vision, core values. We're As, as of this recording, we're in the middle of a five-day workshop teaching people the mission, vision, core values in order to calm the chaos in their business. You can't have a harmonious business if you don't know where you're going and why you're going there. So we got to calm the chaos. We got to get your navigation system and your compass on track. We talked about uh, hiring, which is home, your people, humans optimize in a meaningful environment. We talked about operate your systems, modify, change management. We talked about order, how you get things done. I mean, we touched on probably all, almost all of the 10 disciplines in this episode. Yes. If you really were to pick it apart, Mikey, what you got? If I can add one more, and I actually think that this is one of the most important that most people don't have when I talk to them, data. Data, mm. man, having a good scorecard in your company and, yeah. and being able to have a pulse in your company. A lot of people measure their profit and loss. Um, you, you can't operate without it. And, and that's great if you have a profit and loss, but you need to be able to have predicting indicators as well that you can use to affect the profit and loss. Because if you're just measuring based on the profit and loss, it's too late by the time the profit and loss is available. Um, mm -hmm. So having both lagging and leading indicators in your business, I think is critical. And a lot of business owners that come to me tend not to have that. And uh, you, you can't predict, you can't make your business predictable and scalable without having good data. And you touched on it too, because that I 100% agree, but what are we measuring and why are we measuring it? Yep. And that comes from your vision. You Absolutely. break your vision down into actionable chunks, quarterly chunks. You yep. work in those small bite-sized increments. You manage the leading indicators and you'll get there probably faster than your vision says. If you have a 10-year vision, but you've broken it down well, you'll probably get there in five, six, seven years and you'll blow past that vision. Absolutely. Which is awesome. So listen, this episode has been uh, really cool. And it's so awesome to see that other people are understanding and figuring out that you need a system, you need a framework. And I don't mean a system like, like a how-to daily system that we talked about. I mean a, a global system to follow and a framework to run your company through. So uh, Mikey, thank you so much for being here. This is so, It's so great to hear your path and, and it's possible for other people out there because too many Absolutely. people go out of business in those first couple of years. So um, I'm going to put your website on the screen here. Um, mikeybars.com where else can people follow you are, you are you on social media or anything yeah absolutely mikey bars on facebook uh mikey bars on instagram i believe my handle is uh mikeybars.freedompreneur or freedompreneur.mikeybars because i'm writing a book called uh, freedompreneur breaking the chain the chains of entrepreneurship where i talk a lot about uh, a lot of this stuff um but yeah social media if anybody's in canada and they need a vape you can go to 5-starvapor.com and uh, support the vape shop but beyond that, I'm pulling an Alex Ramosi right now. I have nothing to sell you, but uh, stay tuned. That's so awesome. I love that. And uh, one last thing, because I know we know we talked about this, and this is it's so cool that this is the the path that you're taking in your life. Um, tell me what's next for you when you do get this website ready to go and everything. Where are you taking people? Because it's so important. I want you to highlight that real quick. Yeah. So uh, basically, we all know that school failed entrepreneurs. I'm not going to say it failed everybody because we still need doctors. We still need lawyers. Professionals are still very important. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, school isn't for you. And there needs to be a place for people like us to learn. Uh, so my passion project is Freedom Labs. Uh, it stands for life and business strategy or life and business systems, but it's basically all the same. And uh, basically, I'm going to be teaching anything that has to do with freedom. So I'm going to be teaching people how to formulate something like this. I have something called my life book. I took a life book course and it basically teaches you how to break your life down into life areas and figure out your vision and your core values and everything in your life. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be doing something, uh, some courses around there. I'm going to be doing some personal finance courses that show people how to come up with their financial independence number and how to achieve it. And I'm going to be doing some business courses on uh, business systems and scaling and uh, strategy and, and whatnot. So basically anything that you need to figure out what freedom means to you and to achieve that life. Um, I'm going to try to have uh, some courses and support systems and communities based around that. That's so awesome. We'll link to everything possible, everything that Mikey just said in the show notes here if you're uh, if you're watching the recording. But uh, thanks again for coming. This is a great episode and something I think people really need to hear. Um, so thank you for joining me. And for you watching, we'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. But take this away, please. You need a global system 
for your business. You need an operating framework or you will never get out of the chaos and the firefighting. If you want to get to that next level in your business, you want to grow, follow Mikey, follow people like myself. We'll teach you that system and the framework. We want to get you to the dream business that you always wanted to have and the freedom that you started this business for. So thanks again. We'll see you on the next episode. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Trust us, man.